Okay, hello friends. Um, first, apologies for my voice, but uh, I have actually caught COVID. Uh, my wife brought it home from her, from her uh, visits to uh, Italy this month, and uh, feels like a very bad head cold slash flu. But I'll get through it, and I'm so bored. I figured I might as well make a, make a little video to end the boredom. So what we have here, ladies and gents is a phenomenal piece of engineering equipment. It is an, a one kilowatt automatic antenna, antenna coupler, antenna tuner, antenna coupler. Uh, it is made by Harris. The designation is RF 2601, 2601. And it is a phenomenal piece of equipment. It is large. Uh, it is 20, I'm sorry, 30 inches long. And just for comparison, Here's my size nine shoe, my size nine foot, 30 inches long, uh, weighs no less than 86 pounds. It is a beast. Um, let's take a look. So on the front, I'll just give you a little tour of it, is the high voltage uh, insulator, which is designed to connect either to a whip uh, or a long wire or a vertical, so it's essentially a vertical or a long wire of some kind. Uh, apparently, uh, according to this, it can generate up to 15,000 volts of RF. So careful uh, with with that. And a uh, friend in California has put together something called a long wire adapter, which is a uh, 50 picofarad, I forget the exact number, 50 or 150 picofarad uh, series capacitor uh, and a mount. And a, anyway, we'll get to that later. Let's take a look at the back of it. On the rear, you can see, I will mention that this has never been used. It's never been installed. I got this on eBay for a great price. These are pretty rare, actually. Um, from what I think I heard, if I remember correctly, if I haven't, somebody will let me know in the in the comments. Only about 500 of these were made. Uh, and I have seen one or two others in the wild, maybe one other in the wild. And so, um, you know, they, but, but believe me, you're looking for years for one of this, I was very lucky to find it again. My friend uh, in California spotted it on eBay and let me know ASAP. So um, here's a multi-pin connector. I haven't counted. I'm guessing it's 37, 38, something like that. Uh, and this is for the control. I'll describe that in a bit. And here is your RF input, an end standard end connector. Here's the nomenclature play 2601, one kilowatt fast automatic coupler. Uh, <clears throat> okay, here, um, you'll notice that, that this has a pressure gauge. Let me get on the floor here. These are normally uh, charged with nitrogen. And um, this, is the, this is how you, this is the charging port. And this is, I guess if you have, is a relief valve. If it gets too high, if the pressure gets too high, it'll relieve some of the pressure. And the purpose of this nitrogen is really kind of twofold. One, it uh, keeps pressure inside the coupler so that it's, it's, it's difficult or impossible for any humidity in the environment to ingress into it. Humidity, of course, especially on ships where this is designed to be used, um, is a bad thing. So they keep it pressurized. And the other benefit of pressurization is that the uh, nitrogen has a higher breakdown voltage than oxygen or, O2 or air. And so uh, it helps reduce the arcing to uh, a minimum or zero, uh, I guess probably zero based on the voltages they know that are produced inside of this. Uh, it, it'll be zero, zero arcing. Here is a picture of the insides of one of these. This comes from the manual, a uh, little black and white drawing here, uh, picture here. Uh, uh, for obvious reasons, I didn't really feel like opening it up because uh, to do that, one, you risk getting humidity, uh, atmospheric humidity into it, which I'd prefer not to do. And two, uh, you'd have to screw it back down in a particular sequence, much like bolting down a cylinder head on an engine. Uh, so anyway, I thought you'd like to see uh, a picture of this. Uh, and so this, the, you, some of you may recognize this because there was another Harris product called the RF-601, as opposed to the 2601. The 601 was also 
the same exact physical dimensions. I don't know about the weight. My guess is similar. But it was, it, and while it was automatic, it was, it, was, uh, it was controlled by a remote controlling device, a remote controller. Um, I can't remember the designation of it off the top of my head. Part of the, I think it was the ANURA38 series system. Uh, and that required, it don't, you know, I may be not exactly right, but something in the order of 36, 37 conductors uh, to remote this. Uh, the old, the, 20, the 601, the original version of the 601. And the reason it needed so many is because there was no intelligence inside the unit. There was only um, servos that would control uh, a big L and some variable ca capacitors, variable inductor uh, or two. And all the, and, and you and the inside there were, uh, uh, you know, the servo amps. Uh, and all that had to, those analog voltages had to come back to this external controller, which was doing sort of the heavy lifting. Uh, in this version, there are only a handful of, even though it's got a huge connector on it, there are only a handful of control signals required. Uh, AC, 115 volts AC, or, or 230. And a couple of others. This is fully automatic and has intelligence, had a, a microprocessor inside of it. Um... And so, it, it, in fact, it functions, I would say identically, but I'd have to, I haven't done the thorough analysis, nearly identically to the RF3, uh, 382A smaller 400 watt uh, antenna coupler, tactical antenna coupler. You, you see they're usually green or sometimes gray. Um, so um, it, it functions the same way. It's got the same kind of interface. So uh, this is, as I said, a kilowatt, and it will make a perfect companion to my kilowatt transmitter, my RF-1140. Uh, and in fact, it was designed to work together. There is a connector on the back of this. It's a DB25. And um, all you need to do is run the lines, uh, you know, five or six lines of that DB25 to this big cable, and you're done. Um, now, there is another mode of operating this, and so let me show you what that's all about. All right, so this is another interesting little unit that is part of the system, although it is not required. So this is the RF2602 status monitor. No, notice it is not called a controller because it is not controlling anything, uh, although it, it can be used to, to do some controls. This is an optional part of the system. Um, if you uh, if you connect it the way I described before, which is the 25 pin DB, the DB25 on the back of the transmitter, connected to this 30 something pin conductor uh, connector on the back of the coupler, that's all you need. It's got everything it needs. However, if you get this item and this item, um, also very hard to come by, uh, allows you to do a few things. One, it allows you to manually retune from this front panel. Uh, you can key the transmitter. You can run a test, and this is a this is a self test of the coupler, which uh, is is a great feature. And then status, even though it's one LED, interestingly, there's a there's a little card. I don't know whether it's Delrin or something plastic card that gives you um, all different various status light sequences and what the fault, what the meanings of it are, and then you know. Uh, what you might do to to rectify the problem. Uh, and so um, the other thing that this allows you to do is uh, you can put the antenna in, in bypass mode. And what this means is that in on, in receive mode, when the transmitter is, in, is not transmitting, it's in receive, this will allow you to um, bypass the antenna coupler, meaning remove all the L's and C's, and allow it to be a broadband, allow your antenna to receive broadband signals. Useful for a ham for sure, when you don't want to have to keep, uh, you know, changing to a new band and having to key up just to get the the uh, coupler uh, L's and C's into the right uh, frequency. So very convenient. And then if there's a fault, you know, these things again designed to be used on ships. Uh, if there's a fault, you can override the fault and tell it to keep on keep on running, especially if there's a uh, you know, some kind of uh, emergency issue where, um, you know, you have to, the comms have to get out. And it's very tiny. It's one, it's a one you little fella. And uh, it's so small that in fact, these big, I don't know if I can get a 
picture of the rear. Uh, these big, you know, circular connectors are so big that they had to uh, they had to notch out the top of this just to make them fit. And so what you'll notice here is uh, one of these. Sorry for the camera work. Uh, one of these goes to the transmitter, and then it, it basically is, it, it really is just a pass-through, uh, I'm sorry, a pass-through to, to this, which goes to the coupler. And um, let's take a quick look inside. It's pretty much a pass-through. There's very little inside here. Here you can see the, uh, the card where it gets held. Uh, there are a series of uh, dip switches, and these uh, allow you to set it for different you, you, for use with different transmitter systems. Um, you know whether it's the three fifty k or you know the fourteen forty six or the you know the uh, eleven thirty eleven forty the you know different different settings, and all and that's really it. What you see here is that the signals basically go in and out. They're they're pretty much in parallel, and this allows some some of them to to, to enable something to disable etc and so the value in my environment of having this is I believe and this is still to be proven I believe this will help me allow me to use this big giant coupler with other radios uh, because I will have the ability to tune there's a tune request I'll, I'll click retune key up when this turns on I key up a, a, a key or mic on some other transmitter and let it do its thing, hopefully to get to get the ready light. And without this, though, it's kind of tied to the um, to the Harris transmitter. And I'd like to be able to use this with other transmitters um, for convenience. Uh, and so uh, let's get back to the main event. So uh, yeah, just some specs on it. Nothing too too exciting. I'll I'll post a link to the specs on this coupler. Um, in the in the comments section, but uh, it it the retune from a memory retune. So it's got it's got a built-in memory. I think it's got 500 memories, 500 me uh, frequencies that it'll remember. Um, yeah, but from tune, retune from memory is 75 milliseconds. Uh, it will learn in says I think two to three seconds, and um, yeah. So maybe and I think the the timeout is set to 10 seconds if it can't find a solution in, in 10 seconds. Times out. But you're really looking from 75 milliseconds to about three or four seconds most. Uh, and then again, once it's got a, a solution in memory for that frequency, uh, it's 75 milliseconds. And yeah, so um, the, so I'll just mention that uh, um, in my shack, uh, I, I'm you know oh let's let's not forget this. So uh, I also was able to acquire this is a is a uh, 50. Uh, foot cable and you'll see this is the side that goes onto the antenna coupler the big 37 or whatever 38 pin connector this is the side that will go uh, on the back of the status monitor and so a uh, 50 foot should get me out to some part of the house to mount this bit bad boy on and then I just have to what I have to do then is make my own connector from here to the transmitter and so um yeah i will uh, i will provide some information about how i'm doing that thanks